I try and it's harder than She made That's right. 
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Good Shepherd Sunday. If you're wondering why I have my little sheep and lambs out, it is Good Shepherd Sunday. And so we continue to celebrate the Easter season. So hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So we welcome you to worship both in person and those of you who are watching on your devices. Um, welcome. If you are a first time visitor and didn't get a welcome bag on your way in, please make sure we get you one on your way out. And if you are also a first time guest or returning back after a time away, please make Make sure we get your contact information. There is um, cards in the pew in front of you you can fill out and um, give to us so we can personally welcome you here. Uh, next Sunday, um, you may have read in the newsletter, we are going to go to having the wafer and um, individual cups for wine or grape juice at the altar instead of the put together individual kit um, at the altar. So we'll go return to that. There will still be the individual kit available to you if you want to remain in your seats um, as we've been doing it um, or you can bring up the individual kit up to the altar and I can say the words of um, blessing to you for there as well. So that'll be starting next week. Then the following Sunday, we got a lot of events coming up um, in May. So May 14th, it's Mother's Day. We're going to have a Mother's Day um, brunch, but it's just not for mothers. It's also to recognize and celebrate the ministries of John McAuliffe and Michelle Hilton, our Synod Parish Deacon, as they are leaving us, as many of us know, um, moving to the other coast. And so we want to take some time to celebrate a farewell and Godspeed and um, give thanks for their ministries among us as they take their ministries elsewhere um, onto the other coast. So that'll be on the 14th, so two weeks. And then May 21st is going to be our Senior Sunday. So not seniors as retirement beyond, but we have a graduating high school senior, Emily Miller. And so we're excited for her, so we'll have a celebration of her um, on May 21st. So kind of next three Sundays, things coming up. Um, so make sure that's all on your calendar. And then I think, Rick, you're up. Good morning. So we usually start off with the birthdays. We, I started out with five birthdays this week, but we went to six. So today it's Jeff Miller and also first time guest Tom. So happy birthday, Tom. Uh, Tuesday, it's Dorothy Bowler. Wednesday, we have two, Kim Farrell and Janet Hepner. And on Thursday, it's Gail Hodge. So John, can you start us off with happy birthday? have a blessed day each and every day. Community Meals had 40 people attending last week and served 83 meals. The food pantry served 73 families yesterday and we'd like to continue to thank all the volunteers who give of their time to keep these things up and running. Pastor Ashley's e-blast this week talks about her upcoming sabbatical and she answers some questions about it, and so be sure to read it. Making Joyful Noise by John Ferreira. Check out our website to get a link for the short and entertaining video about the upcoming hymns for each Sunday. Thank you, John. Some ministry opportunities this week. Sunday school during fellowship today after the service, so please join us. Community meal at 5.30 on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have property at 8 a.m. and at bell choir and choir rehearsal. Bell choir at 6, choir rehearsal at 7. Um, Thursday, we have St. Paul Prayer Zoom, titled Talking with God at 4 p.m. Again, that's on Thursday. Food pantry bagging on Thursday at 
and distribution on Saturday at 9 a.m. And upcoming and ongoing, as Pastor Ashley said, starting next Sunday, we will offer four options for Holy Communion. If you have any questions, it is explained in this month's messenger. Also, we are planning on Sunday, May 21st, to go to Fort Myers for the murder mystery train ride with the getaway overnight package. So please let me know if you are available because we want to make the reservations as soon as possible. And now, after examining the paltry tips left by the church group, our waitress was not pleased. Looking toward my table, she grumbled, these people come in with the Ten Commandments and a $10 bill, and they don't break any of them. <laughs> the pastor asks his flocks, flock, what would you like people to say when you're in your casket? One congregant says, I'd like them to say I was a fine family man. Another says, I'd like them to say I helped people. The third responds, I'd like them to say, look, I think he's moving. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Now, Pastor Emeritus Don will come and share all about our Raise the Roof, Raise the Kids campaign. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Blessings to all of you. Good to see you in worship. And also for those who are watching, you call it vices or devices? Okay, those who are watching on your devices, uh, we good to see you too this morning. Today is a special day in the life of St. Paul Lutheran Church. It is April 30th, and today we celebrate and thank God for the success so far in our campaign to raise the roof, raise the kids. It has been a significant milestone accomplished here and on the part of many dedicated workers and donors we are very happy to, and pleased to celebrate first of all going way back in our history on november 14 2022 the congregation voted to do major renovation replace the beams if you will of the educational building and also do major renovations so that the ECLC, Early Childhood Learning Center, can continue its ministry for the community. So on the 14th of November, that is when we launched the program or the campaign. Then on the 28th, the church council received a proposal on how to initiate the campaign and therefore we move forward after that. Once that was accomplished, we started gathering together significant members of the church in their, for their leadership roles, their creativity, and their dedication to the project. And so I'd like to call their names, and I'd like for them to be recognized. Some of them are out of town, obviously, or else they would be here. Uh, there are three of them to start off right now. Susan Shear. Mike Shear and uh, Debbie Rader, they're back there in the phone booth or the cage. <laughs> so anyways, they're, they're already standing. Judy Carnell is not here, but she, we recognize her. Cindy Paxton, who is here, our assisting minister today. Rick, who just spoke and tried to bore us with some jokes. I didn't think they were very good this morning, Rick. But anyways, go ahead. No, that's just me personally. You know, it's not a problem, Rick. We can always talk about it. But anyways, in, and his uh, partner and partner in marriage and life, Susan Berry, please stand and be recognized. Uh, Marty Hilleridge, who is on the team for events coordinating. Uh, Debbie Rado, who I mentioned, Mike Rado, uh, Tonya Miller, Bob Lavier, and his wife, Kim. Erlene Ashbrook, Pastor Ashley, George Holofiltz, our uh, president of the congregation, ex officio, and myself. So let's give the people uh, an expression of our thanks. 
they started coming together and they were under pressure right away to accomplish many things. In fact, when we met on December 14th as a campaign leadership team, the first, the first thing we had to do was develop a case, a presentation, thus this came about. And uh, I know that to Mike and Debbie Rado, for instance, while on Christmas vacation and camping, had to leave where they were staying because they lost their Wi-Fi capability and what drove an hour and a half away to pick it up so you could continue working on the brochure. So, pardon me? Oh, okay, thank you. But anyways, a lot of dedication has gone into this, this campaign, and that's just typical of the tremendous amount of work and effort into it. So a case was developed, many events were held here, dinners, uh, we went out and had a pizza party, uh, we had a uh, art festival with the children of the, so lots of things have taken place. So with no more to do, let me suggest to you, today we merely celebrate the accomplishment thus far, but there's still a way to go. And the way to go will be means by personal contact with possible donors in the community, uh, companies and foundations, we will continue. And also it's the same with members of the church, those who would like to ad give additional gifts or those who have not given would be encouraged to do so as we continued forward uh, on the campaign. So first of all, let me ask that the slides be shown, please. <coughs> raise the roof, raise the kids. The campaign that was launched officially the 1st of February are on January the 13th. So the campaign launched, we say, officially on February 23, and the estimated cost for the whole project of the Victor Lundy's building and the Early Childhood Learning Center estimated campaign was $665,425. Our goal, in conjunction or in addition to the state grant we receive our goal of that 665,000 was 455,675 dollars. That was the initial campaign goal in necessity. <coughs> Excuse me. The next slide, please. So, therefore, as of today, 2023, April 30th, we have received gifts and pledges of 260 thousand two hundred thirty six dollars plus the grant I mentioned to you of two hundred nine thousand seven hundred fifty so that gives us a total towards the estimated cost of four hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred sixty eight dollars but our continued needs to complete the estimated cost is a hundred ninety five thousand and four hundred thirty nine dollars but today is a day of celebration for what we've accomplished and the upper echelons of gifts and pledges along with the grant. So we're very grateful, but we hope and pray that everyone will recognize that we have a long way to go and periodically you'll be hearing from us for, for an update, but this is an aggressive time now where we move forward again, like I say, talking to, writing for, applying to churches, community interested persons and architectural interested persons especially to raise the balance. So thank you and continue to pray for raise the roof, raise the kids. Thank you. Thank you Pastor Don for your leadership in this and we Thank you all for all of your participation in this, too. Are there any other announcements? If not, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prayer.
please rise as you're able for our gathering hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with the hymn of praise, verse 2. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are are the river of life you are the everlasting wellspring in mercy and might you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus the firstborn of the dead in baptismal waters our old life is washed away and in them we are born anew glory to you for the oceans and lakes for rivers and streams honor to you for waters that wash us clean quench our thirst and nurture both crops and creatures Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life 
in Jesus Christ. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reign forever. Amen. Amen. Continue with our hymn of praise. pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we continue with special music from our St. Paul singers.
choir. We continue with our scripture readings for this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Thank you, Jim, for being our scripture reader. A reading from the Acts of the Apostle, the second chapter. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they had spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to the number of those who are being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second uh, reading is actually where we'll be singing Psalm 23.
Our third reading from the first letter of Peter, the second chapter. It is credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten, beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we are going might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For when you are going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Before we rise for the gospel acclamation, I'd like to have our kids come forward for a children's message for them. I know some are out in the playground too, in nursery, and but yeah, Harper, come on up. Come on up, Liam and Avery. Yeah, you want to sit right down there? Oh, you brought. You, is that little Oliver? Yes. Oh, you got them for Christmas. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's great having you up here. So, yeah, you can have a seat. So, do you remember a few weeks ago on Easter Sunday, we, we kind of talked about an animal. Do you remember which one we were talking about? The butterflies. And we all flew around like butterflies. Here comes Marin. Can't miss her. Wonderful. So we had butterflies that day, and then this week, what are these? I know. Sheeps. Sheeps, you're right. What do sheeps make? What sounds? Bah. bah! So a lot of times we can do this for the sheep, kind of like their ears. So if we do this, bah, bah. So when we leave today, we're going to all be like sheep. So cause, Jesus talks about animals a lot, doesn't he then? Because we think about butterflies is Jesus and now the sheep so sometimes sheep aren't very smart they're not and so so some ways when Jesus says we're his sheep that kind of means because we mess up and but the thing is Jesus goes finds us whenever we mess up and so he's always there's a kind of a famous picture that has him holding a sheep on his shoulder I better be careful with my microphone. So he holds us. So if we're ever kind of lost and don't know where to go and are sad, we can always just say, you know, Jesus, I know you're holding me right now. You're holding me like I'm on your shoulders. And then when we're really, when, it can also be when we're happy. Because a lot of times sheep like to be together. And so we have a shepherd that kind of makes sure that they hold every, all the sheep together. And so that's kind of like, you know, how our church, we have a lot of people that come together. And so sometimes if we go away and go back on our own, eh, Jesus comes and brings us back in. And so Jesus, we remember that we are Jesus's sheep, that we are ones that he loves and he's never going to let go. Because even if we try to run away, because sometimes sheep run away, he's going to keep looking for us always. And so, uh, do you guys want to play with the sheep during worship today? You're, as long as I can get them back. Because I, I like having them for every Good Shepherd Sunday. Because that's what today is. It's called Good Shepherd. 
because a shepherd is one who takes care of his sheep. And Jesus is our good shepherd. So why don't you each take one and you can play with during the service. You got, you, you got that one? That works. That's fine. We can let you play with that one because Jesus takes care of doggies too. There you go. And if you end up wanting to play with one later, Harper, you can come and get it. Sure you don't want it? Okay, we can get you after. So let's take our, our sheep and our, our animals, because Jesus loves them all, and let's hold them up and let's, let's pray. And so repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for loving me, for loving me like, a sheep. like a sheep. Hold me, hold me closely, closely and help me, and help me. tell everyone <coughs> that you're holding them too. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thanks for coming up. So you don't want to play with the sheep over there? No, you got your own. That works. And you can bob on the way back. So I got a couple of sheep to remind us that it is Good Shepherd Sunday. So please rise as you are able for our gospel acclamation. The Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his name. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Happy Good Shepherd Sunday. The fourth Sunday of Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday. It's the Sunday we recognize that Jesus is the one who laid down his life for his sheep for us. The first three weeks of Easter, we hear stories of how the resurrected Jesus was revealed to his disciples. This year we heard about the resurrected Lord appearing to the Marys and saying, Greetings, do not be afraid. And then he tells them to go to tell the other disciples about his resurrection. Then we heard about Jesus revealing himself in the locked room, not just once, but twice, a week apart, since Thomas wasn't there the first time. Then last week we heard the story about Jesus taking a walk with his disciples. And only in the breaking of the bread was he recognized. 
All of these ways he was revealed in surprise, in doubt, in scripture, and in eating together. So we could wonder why that theme didn't continue or why it was interrupted with this Good Shepherd Sunday. We are going back to a pre-resurrection story. But I don't think of it as an interruption or missing the theme. This is another way Jesus is revealed to us. It's probably one of the most popular images of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So if you want to click the next screen, because I know I grew up with this image. In my home congregation in Minnesota, this is a picture of their stained glass window. It's right when you walk into their sanctuary. As Jesus surrounded by his sheep and holding one sheep in his arms. This image for me is, is especially powerful today as my home congregation closes its doors as a church of the ELCA. They did their official holy closure service a couple weeks ago and today Good Shepherd Sunday is their last worship service. A place that revealed Jesus the Good Shepherd to me will now live on as a youth ministry center for other churches in town. My prayer is that the youth of my hometown will see the same stained glass window and know they are loved by the same Good Shepherd that carried that congregation for over 126 years and now will carry the next generation to life and life abundant. This gospel lesson always makes me reminisce, not only on the Good Shepherd, but also on John 10.10. 10. I've probably shared it with you before that while I was growing up, there was a store in our mall called John 10.10. 10. It was full of knickknacks and these cards that always had the most beautiful sayings or you can pick out everybody's name and it had a Bible verse with it and kind of what um, the, the name might mean. It was always just a place that made me feel loved just like I did in church. And I had no idea until I was older that the name of the store was based on the scripture from John chapter 10 verse 10. I just knew I would yell when I was going into the mall, I'm going to John 10.10, 10, and then run over there and leave my mom in the dust. And then I, once I learned the verse, the store was not only my go-to place, but that verse became my go-to verse. It's the verse that helped me realize that a Christian life isn't just about going to heaven when I die, it's about life and life abundant now. Our story from Acts is the story of how the first followers of Jesus lived once Jesus had ascended back into heaven. It says day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread, ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. I love that imagery. They went about their lives worshiping, eating together, their hearts glad and generous, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people, caring about one another. That's abundant life. Loving God, caring for ourselves, and loving our neighbor. And by doing that, the Lord adds to those being saved. It can be that simple. In our gospel story, Jesus also says he is the gate. Now I know when we think about gate in our context, I think we often more think about a gated community or prison gates or baby gates or puppy gates trying to keep people in or out. So the image of Jesus being a gate is totally distorted and actually opposite of what I think he meant. As one scholar wrote, this gate is not a wall or a barrier or an enclosure or dividing line. It doesn't separate, isolate, segregate, or incarcerate. Jesus said, I am the gate, the door, the opening, the passageway, the place where freedom begins. This, I believe, is the image of the gate that Jesus meant. It's not about who is in or who is out, 
but rather the opening to life and life abundant. In November newsletter article, I shared a poem by Sam Shoemaker called I Stand by the Door. I believe it articulates not only Jesus as the gate or the door, but also our calling as followers of Jesus to help those enter life and life abundant. I want to conclude my time with some of that poem again. I stand by the door. I neither go too far in nor stay too far out. The door is the most important door in the world. It is the door through which men and women walk when God finds them. There is no use my going way inside and staying there when so many are still outside and they as much as I crave to know where the door is. And all that so many ever find is only the wall where the door ought to be. They creep along the wall like those who are blind with outstretched groping hands, feeling for a door, knowing there must be a door, yet they never find it. So I stand at the door. The most tremendous thing in the world is for all to find the door, the door to God. The most important thing that anyone can do is to take hold of those blind, groping hands and put it on the latch, the latch that only clicks and opens with one's own touch. Men and women die outside the door as starving beggars die on cold nights and in cruel cities in the dead of winter, die for want of what is within their grasp. They live on the other side of it, live because they have not found it. Nothing else matters compared to helping them find it and open it and walk in and find him. So I stand at the door. Thanks be to God. Our reflection question for the week. How are you a doorkeeper? We continue with the hymn of the day, The Lamb. This is also, I first heard this song in my home congregation. On Easter Sunday, we would often, the choir, we would try to figure out what we want to sing for Easter Sunday, and it always became the Lamb. We want to sing the Lamb. Every Easter was the Lamb. We, we mixed in a few others too, but the Lamb was a favorite of my home congregation choir.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith together with the Nicene Creed. We, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, of God eternally God and of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God and not our name, of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and in the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You are the shepherd who gathers us in your mighty and loving arms. Help your church to listen for your voice, especially when the voices of sin, idolatry, and oppression threaten and overpower us. Hear us, O God. The green pastures, still waters, and dark valleys of this earth all belong to you, O Lord. Sustain your creation with a love that is both mighty and just. Where there is destruction, bring healing. Where there is desolation, bring abundance. Hear us, O God. You proclaim shepherding love comfort and protection for all people and all of creation. Direct leaders in our own time to learn from your example and instruction. Give them servant hearts that they generously seek the good of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You journey with us wherever our paths may lead. We pray for those feeling overwhelmed by anxiety, or depression, or suffering in any way. Be especially with those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer chain, for the names listed in our bulletin this morning, for those who are suffering from COVID-19, for those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19, for healthcare workers and law enforcement officers, for the prayers upon the community prayer cross, for Ukraine, for those suffering from natural or human-made disasters, for our members, especially Teresa Elger, Wilma Armstrong, Earlene Ashbrook, and Deborah Bark, for our preschool teachers and students, including Isla, Augustina, and Flora, Ms. Edwin, Mrs. Lisa and Ms. Ivan. Hear us, O God. You are the sheep gate that gives safety to your beloved flocks. Provide protection for refugees, victims of domestic violence, those who are in prison, and all people who are vulnerable to violence and mistreatment. Hear us, O God. You call your sheep by name and lead them through the valley of death. We give you thanks for those who have died and now dwell in your house forever. 
Be with those who mourn and give them hope in the promise of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take some time to share God's peace with one another as we turn our hands into hearts. Our offering plates aren't passed around the pews, but they are available to you um, as you walk in or as you leave the sanctuary. And this is the time that our offerings will be brought forward as we continue with our offering prayer. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the spiritual communion prayer especially for those of you who are watching on your devices and cannot physically eat of Jesus' body and blood. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. This is a time for those of you who would like Holy Communion at your seats to lift up the elements for blessing and consecration. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death into life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. Thanks be to God. This is the time for those of you who'd like communion at your seats to open and take the host wafer that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And then the wine or the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink.
And those of you who'd like to take Holy Communion at the altar rail are welcome to come forward at the instruction of the ushers. Please rise as you are able. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. And receive the blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen.
Our sending hymn is Thine the Amen, verses 1, 2, and 5. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. And all the heavens say, Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you. 